Hi folks, my name is Ron Brown. This is going to be the most fun DVD that I've brought you to date. Kitchen utensils is something I've been looking forward to for a long time now because they're fun. I'm going to show you how to make everything from spatulas, long skinny spatulas, short fat spatulas. These are actually things that you can use uh, to cook with in the kitchen. Uh, we make them out of scrap. They cost almost nothing to make. So we're going to talk about spatulas. I'm also going to show you how to make some gorgeous two-piece coffee scoops. Been a lot of interest lately in making coffee scoops. This one right here is for somebody that really loves coffee. I'll show you how to make a whole variety of coffee scoops. Then when we talk about other scoops, I'm going to show you how to make goblet style scoops. This one starts out like a goblet and then we go to either the bandsaw or the sander and we cut it off. This is kind of a traditional scoop, been around for a gazillion years. This is uh, one of the same kind uh, over there almost. Uh, some of you will know these as a burger style scoop where you turn a sphere and then the handle and then we go and hollow it out. This particular one is a two-piece for those of you with mini lathes. These are a lot easier to make. So I'm going to show you how to make uh, the ice cream style scoops. Then I'll show you how to make, still keeping with the two-piece, how to make what I call chili ladles because you could, a couple of these, get you a nice big bowl of Texas chili. So this one is made in two pieces. Once again, if you made it in one piece, you'd have to turn it like this and uh, that gets uh, too interesting for some of us. So I'll show you how to make this style. I will also show you how to make a style with a flat bottom. It's two-piece handle, got a flat bottom, very, very easy to make and eliminates a whole lot of the holding issues that we have. In order to make an ice cream scoop with a one-piece handle, you have to have sufficient swing. For those of you with mini lathes, we're going to cover the two-piece handle next. You'll find a lot of valuable techniques covered in this section. If nobody has ever taught you how to turn a sphere, it's actually really, really simple. The width the height and the depth are all equal. After all, it's a sphere. So take your calipers, measure the diameter of your cylinder, and then lay that out as a length. And then you need to use your best bead turning techniques to turn a sphere. Mark the center. Whoops, that's not the center. Go back and mark the center. What's that rubber thing on the end of the pencil there? Oh yeah, it's an eraser. Yep, you can erase stuff on a lathe just like you would on a paper. Then we need to make some 
boundary cuts or some delimiters as it were I like to use the parting tool and uh, go on down pretty good so I have some working room and then with my center marked go on ahead and do my best to turn a sphere how do you know if you have a sphere I'll show you that in just a minute We just knock the corners off first. Take your time. Don't rush it. You can do this with a skew if you want. I'm better using a spindle gouge, so that's what I'm showing you here. However you can turn a sphere, just use that. Time for some finesse. From here, this is a pure spindle turning exercise. Go ahead and rough it on down. You can make the handle uh, any length that suits you. you know, the dimensions are really arbitrary. I've got a sphere here of around uh, two inches or so in diameter, so my handle is probably going to be around seven inches. You can make it as fancy as you want or as plain as you want. You can use wire burning techniques. You can just make it plain. It's really up to you. So sit back and enjoy. One of the huge benefits of holding your workpiece in a chuck is that you don't need the tailstock. When I part this end off here, I'm still going to have plenty of support to finish sand the end of the bowl of my scoop with no tailstock. This is a huge time saver, and I usually get a much better job doing it this way. Another reason why I like to use chucks to hold my work. I just feel like I need to tell you that you're dealing with an airplane propeller. If you put your hands in harm's way, you're going to get smacked. So. Please be careful. Please be extra careful. Be aware what you're doing and keep your hands out of the way. I don't want you to get hurt.
we don't rough down in the normal sense. On the blade, I like the handle to be centered on the blade. So when I rough the blade down, all I'm really trying to do is to get the sides parallel to one another. When I turn the handle, sometimes I turn it straight and plain. Sometimes I make it fancy. Sometimes I use a wire burner to add accents. Just depends on how I feel and how many of these I've made and what I've done recently. Just making some little grooves in preparation to use the wire burner. The surface speed of small diameters is not very fast. The wire burner depends on friction to do its job, so I really need to crank the speed up. A word of caution, you're turning between centers. We've actually cut this diameter on the end of the handle down pretty small. So be careful because if you're going to get a break, it could happen here. Caution is always the best path. Our next step is going to be to go to the bandsaw and cut the blade to the shape that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out about the shape that I want. You're shooting for a thickness of under a quarter of an inch, typically around 3 16 You'd like to have a fair curve and you'd like to have it as smooth as possible. The real trick is getting one side cut parallel to the other one. And I've got a little trick for that that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. 